got plenty more to discuss. Joining me now is media writer for The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth. Sophie, let's start with a piece that appeared on The Australian's website just a few hours ago, causing all sorts of a stir. Uh, ABC presenter Stan Grant has issued a announcement saying that he's going to take a break after presenting Q&A on Monday. Um, and uh, we don't know how long this is for Sophie, but he's certainly not happy with the ABC. That's right, Rita. So this follows with their controversial coronation coverage, uh, which the ABC received a barrage of complaints about their coverage, talking about... Uh, colonisation and how Australia was a racist country and so forth. Mm. Stan's been very outspoken about this. Now, but today... he, said, he said he was speaking with love when he talked about that. He said that it was all... Uh, he meant the monarchists, uh, no offence. I think it was more than just monarchists who were upset with that coverage, let's be honest. But he said, that was never my intent. I thought I used words of love. Clearly, I failed. Well, let's have a look at what that coverage was like. Because the symbol of that crown w w represented the invasion, the theft of land, and in our case, the exterminating war, which next year will mark 200 years. Yeah, I can't imagine why anyone would be upset. More than a thousand complaints they had for that single program, which is unheard of from what I what I understand. Um, but he expresses disappointment at the ABC. He says no one at the ABC has uttered one word of public support after he was criticised for that commentary and, and the whole tone of the coverage. Uh, but the ABC has put out a statement. That's right, Rita. So at the time, uh, we asked my colleague James Matter and I asked the ABC, including Ita Buttrose, what on earth went on during this coronation coverage and we were met with radio silence. ABC put out a statement there, standing by their coverage, but Justin Stevens, the editorial boss today, has come out, condemned any racist abuse, of course, that Stan has received, mm. uh, but says basically the ABC is now conducting this investigation with the Ombudsman and action needs to be taken. But, Rita, what on earth is ABC management doing? They run for cover when there's a disaster. Stan is now walking out of there temporarily. We don't know how long for. Uh, this has been absolutely handled appallingly and David Anderson will be grilled next week when there's Senate estimates on Wednesday. Of course, uh, Stan Grant was upset after the coverage of the Queen's death. He went on, That's I think, right. Richard Carvelis' program on the ABC, a radio program, and said that he felt betrayed by the ABC's coverage, that uh, the, the fact that they were asked to wear black upset him and a whole number of other things. So, yes, it's uh, quite a drama and there's a lot of Stan Grant talking about Stan Grant, which is what Stan Grant does best. Now, let's talk about the Alistair Clarkson affair. I started the show on that and uh, this is a man who's been denied natural justice. I had his good name dragged through the mud, endured eight months of abuse, including from prominent people in the media. And Sophie... The AFL has created this crisis. Hawthorne has created this crisis. This is self-inflicted and uh, Clark Clarkson isn't the only victim, but he's certainly the biggest victim and faced the most egregious of accusations. Well, the ABC, uh, sorry, the AFL, should I say, is always getting praise from the media. They're, you know, almost their cheer squad. They have handled this disgracefully, Rita, mm. and Alistair Clarkson was named, shamed and basically uh, guilty yeah. before there was even a trial. There hasn't even been a proper uh, situation where this has been under investigation. It's been a mess from the beginning. Shame on the media. It's trial by media, but you're guilty before you're innocent. And uh, we are not going to forget all those people who condemned Clarkson and the other two men um, without any due process, without even hearing their side, without having any of these allegations tested. And now they're backtracking. Now of they're appalled they by the process. Now they're saying it's shambolic. No, sorry, you had your chance to have some principles at the start and you chose not to. Now we need some light relief. It's, it's been a bit too full on for a Friday night. And uh, Nicholas Reese. My favourite bit of <laughs> light relief there is, the Deputy Lord Mayor of Melbourne, our friend. Well, he was attending a debate on the monarchy at Melbourne University. He works there. And the debate was hosted by the Robert Menzies Institute. Now, we know what side of the debate Nicholas would have been on. He's just a reliable lefty on everything. But 
as it happens in universities, the event was gate crashed by idiot lefty protesters who ignored all the Conservatives on stage. Bev MacArthur was there, Georgina Downer was there. No, they targeted Nicholas <laughs> and started chanting Nicholas Reese, liberal scum. And I just think that is hilarious, given this man is Labor through and through. He's absolutely Labor through and through, <laughs> Rita. They clearly uh, got him confused, perhaps with the Victorian Liberals, who are pretty much Labor anyway. That's a good perhaps point. Perhaps he thought it was... He could lead the Victorian Liberals. That's Maybe right. that's the answer. Maybe that's what they thought it. happened. It was a Victorian Liberal there, but how funny. I mean, Nicholas, a dear friend of Sky News, but this was hilarious to, to think he's a Liberal. <laughs> I mean, seriously, do they have any idea what Nicholas thinks? He's clearly not a Liberal. But given the Victorian Libs on a number of issues sit to the left of federal Labor, yes. maybe maybe those protesters, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't have called them idiots, maybe they're onto something. Now, remember when Noel Pearson, uh, who's a massive voice advocate, said, when they go low, we go high, that famous Michelle Obama line. Well, let's see what that looks like in practice. Uh, he has launched a personal attack on Mick Gooder, calling him a bedwetter because Gooda expressed his fear that the yes vote may lose. Now, today Gooda has responded to the attack saying personal abuse is not the approach to take because I won't be bullied into conforming with his position and the Australian public won't be bullied into voting yes in this referendum. Well, that is very good advice. But, I mean, are the yes side turning on each other? What is happening here? They are, Rita, and I think every time the Yes campaign come out and really attack people, almost playing the, the man, uh, it's doing them damage. It's doing their cause damage. They're starting to sound like they're desperate because they know they are in trouble. They know people are starting to see the concerns with voting Yes and they don't like it. So they're getting quite nasty and I think it's doing their cause immense harm. I think they never thought it was going to be a contest. I thought that was right. they thought it was going to be like the plebiscite same sex marriage and that was just so foolish because these are entirely different things. Uh, Same-sex marriage plebiscite, in my mind, and a lot of people, it was about giving gay people equal rights that heterosexual couples had. This is about giving a certain class of people additional rights and additional privilege based on their racial background. I mean, it is just so foolish to try to compare those two things and think this is going to sail through without any problems. Now, let's go to the US, and US senators are grilling the uh, former CEO of the Silicon Valley Bank, they did that a couple of days ago, all over the mismanagement of that bank, which saw it collapse. Um, and as is often the case, the best content was provided by Senator John Kennedy. Let's have a look at this exchange. From Mr. My... Becker, you made a really stupid bet that went bad, didn't you? Senator... And the taxpayers of America had to pick up the tab for your stupidity, didn't they? Senator, there were a series of events, unprecedented events that occurred that led us to where we are today. No, this wasn't unprecedented. This was bone deep, down to the marrow, stupid. You put all your eggs in one basket. You put all your eggs in one basket. And unless, unless you were living on the International Space Station, you could see that interest rates were rising and you weren't hedged. I'd like that sort of entertainment at home, frankly. That's that's good good content. <laughs> it is, Rita, but this is a boss who is making up some pretty crazy stuff. He's blaming interest rates. He's blaming social media. I oh, mean, yeah. this was a, a pretty uh, horrendous effort from him, and he's pointing the finger at everyone else. He's not taking any of the blame. I thought it was a pretty uh, poor performance. And this was a bank that was enormously woke. In fact, what it did really well in was all those uh, ESG scores. It was right up there for yep. for that. But when it actually came to, I don't know, the banking and, and risk management, that's where they fell over. Now, I have to ask you about this new swimwear commercial from Adidas. I mean, really, we've already seen Nike employ trans 
activists, Dylan Mulvaney, to model their women's wear line. I don't know if we can have a look at some of the footage there. Yeah, that's inspiring. Um, so Adidas thought, well, no, we'll, we'll just also insult women by having male bodies advertise women's clothing. This is a one-piece swimwear uh, item that's uh, being modelled by a... Uh, can we have a look? A flat-chested man uh, with a hairy chest and, um, well, noticeable bulge. It's there. I'm sorry. Uh, that's who they want to model their swimwear range. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, Sophie. We've seen Sea Folly do the same here in Australia, uh, a brand that Australian women love. Uh, I think quite a few now have said we're boycotting it. I don't know if those promises will stick. But why do, despite the damage we saw with Bud Light, yes. advert, uh, big corporates keep indulging in this? It's just crazy, Rita. It only does their branding harm and we see the ramifications for it. Uh, as a woman, I don't want to see a man wearing a female swimsuit. Uh, that's not going to make me rush out and buy it. I don't think it'll rush, make a lot of women rush to the store because they've seen a hairy-chested man wearing a one-piece. I mean, how ridiculous. But this is the corporate culture now where they're going down this woke path and they think it's going to result in uh, them making money out of this and it doesn't. It's proven time and time again where it's damaging for their brand they they lose financially and they suffer greatly sophia ellsworth always fantastic to have you on thank you for being here tonight